I've always been creating, so there was never really a time when the arts weren't a part of my life. I'm Emily Herbst, I'm a fine artist, and I'm from Cedarville, Ohio. I've always had more thoughts than I knew what to do with, and art is really the only way I can process them. The ceramics process specifically provides the opportunity to step back and think and meditate and conceptualize. Most of it is pretty methodical, weighing, wedging, centering, trimming. It becomes muscle memory after a while, so your body can just go on autopilot while your mind can wander. Something I've noticed about Emily and her process is that she starts off with a lot of brainstorming sessions, a lot of sketches and iterations of an idea. I'm often trying to figure out who I am and what I'm supposed to do, who God is, and what is this reality he's made, and how do they all relate to each other. It's obviously difficult for students to be able to start to synthesize that. Who they are is still developing at this stage, and so it's a challenge to be able to do that. I just want to know God as much as possible and to draw others into this as well. Art is kind of a study tool and a medium through which to know and interface with Him. Before God saved me, there was a lot of things that I didn't like about Him. He just didn't make sense to me. It always bugged me how God was so preoccupied and determined to glorify Himself. I was especially confronted with this when going through Exodus. I perceived Him as being cruel and distant and uncaring and arbitrary and egotistical. But I noticed when mentioning gaining glory for himself, he would follow it up with something to the effect of, then they will know that I'm the Lord. God began to open my eyes to see how his glorification and our salvation are intertwined. In order to accomplish our salvation, Jesus gave up everything to become one of us, and in his hour to be glorified, he was crucified, and he bore the wrath on our behalf. What kept jumping out at me from the beginning was the idea of the Word. He was there in the beginning, God spoke the universe into existence through the Word, and his ultimate purpose was to make himself known through the Word become flesh. What you're actually looking at is the top of the atonement cover on the Ark, but it's positioned in such a way that it also sort of looks like a portal to another world. And what's beautiful about that is the amazing wilderness background that captures the truth of what it was like when God brought his people out of Egypt into the wilderness. And right out of the midst of that, God shows himself through his presence in the wilderness in the book of Exodus. But then she takes it a couple steps further and gives us this picture of the top of the atonement cover on the ark, which is the place where the high priest would splatter the blood to cover our sins. But what she's done there is take the geometric figure of the rectangle that starts with white and then turns a little bit red and then turns white again. And what she's doing is putting the incarnation right there. She is weaving into the piece itself all these layers of how God relates to man. His eternality in the beginning and then in the womb and then eating bone and muscle and sinew and covered in flesh. And it's such an amazing picture because Romans chapter 3 says the Father displayed him as the atonement cover for our sin. In a way, this painting kind of encapsulates my whole reason for being an artist, for me to know God but also to make him known to others. Art is one of the primary ways I'm able to fulfill that calling.